guys, this is Scribbly with another pen review and today we are going to have a look at another Sailor pen. And the specific Sailor pen that we're going to have a look at today is the Sailor 1911 Large that I have got sent by La Couronne du Comte. Thank you very much for review. The Sailor 1911 Large is the bigger brother, so to speak, of the Sailor 1911 Standard, which is a slightly shorter and slightly slimmer also cigar shaped pen the large also costs double as much while it's not double as large it does cost double as much as the standard the standard is available for around 150 euro from la couronne la couronne du Comte, for example whereas the large here does cost uh just shy of 300 euro i think around 290 295 euro somewhere there i got the black version here with the rhodium, rhodium trim the pen is also available with a gold trim it is also available as a rhodium and silver trimmed dem transparent demonstrator pen and then i think the pen is also available in a number of different colors there's also often limited editions that are made of that pen i think there was a peacock blue version as a north america e exclusive recently i think now they are coming out with a tangerine orange north america exclu north america exclusive you can look that up online for yourself as a matter of fact the pen we're looking at right here is the black and rhodium trim version of the sailor 1911 large Let's have a look at the box first. Regular sailor box that all sailor pens come in. 1911 large rhodium trim fountain pen. 21 carat gold medium nib. I got a medium here. A pen is available with extra fine fine medium broad and a number of specialty nibs. Sailor is known for their, their variety of nib choices. As said, just a regular sailor box. Um, comes with an ink converter of course sailor uses a proprietary uh, filling standard so you either need the sailor cartridges or the sailor converter nice thing about sailor pens is that you only have to submerge them just above the breather hole into ink because the sailor pens they don't draw up ink somewhere here below the section they draw up the ink through the breather hole so you actually don't have to dip submerge the whole section into ink and wipe off the section that's a Kind of cool thing that not everybody knows about sailor pens. So I thought I'd point it out here. And then as said, I got mine from La Couronne du Comte, the warranty card that comes with a pen. And then there's nothing under. There was just the converter, but I think the converter was even up here. Anyway, let's have a look at the pen, which is of course the most important thing. Classic cigar shape. Of course, very reminiscent of the Mont Blanc 146, also roughly a similar size. I don't actually know who came up with the design first. I actually also don't care about that. As a matter of fact, it is a very beautiful, very classy cigar-shaped pen, and I do like that a lot. And of course, a cigar-shaped pen has a round top here. There's actually no finial as opposed to the Pro Gear. That, of course, does have the anchor logo here in the finial. I'll bring that back in in a minute when I do the size comparison. We then have a silver ring here. The classic sailor clip here that, of course, also is the same than on the Pro Gear. Cap bands are the same. One silver cap band. Then we have here Sailor Japan on the second broader cap band. Founded 1911. Looks very classy. Cap tapers down a little here onto the barrel that then tapers down all the way to the end. Tapers, tapers, a silver ring and then tapers into the other end, so to speak, of that cigar shaped pen. This is a very beautiful black. It does pick up fingerprints a little bit. Not a lot, though. I am not as disturbed by the fingerprints on sailor pens as I at times am, for instance, on Waterman pens. Most black Waterman pens, I've reviewed the Waterman Exception, I've reviewed the Waterman Karen, and I've reviewed the Waterman Expert Deluxe, all of which have a very 
the versions that I've reviewed, a very glossy black lacquer finish. Uh, so this black resin here doesn't pick up as many fingerprints as those black Waterman lacquer finishes, for instance. The pen is a screw-on cap and screws with one and three quarter turns approximately, which still still makes the pen a very fast note taker, probably not a very fast note taker, but it it is an acceptable cap of time for still being a nice note taker. Uh, there is an inner cap in here that you probably can't really see so well here on camera, but I can see it which prevents the nib from drying out, does an excellent job in doing so. I never had an issue with picking up that pen and it wouldn't write. I mean, Sailor are some of the most spectacular writers out there anyway. We have a very nice chunky section. Um, if you look up measurements online of the Sailor 1911 large versus the Sailor 1911 standard, for instance, Actually, I don't have a standard here, unfortunately, drew a direct size comparison for you. But actually, the size differences don't look that substantial when you look at the sheer measurements. But when you hold the pen in hand, you definitely feel that the 1911 Large is a more substantial pen than the standard. It is definitely a beefier section. That section here has a silver ring, tapers down just a little bit flares out just a little bit to give your grip a little bit a more firm hold onto that grip section. The 1911 large S is the pro gear in the regular um, uh, standard ver regular version do have the perfect girth for me. It's quite, it's not a super beefy pen, but it has a good width. It's very, very comfortable to hold. The Sailor Pro Gear Slim as the 1911 standard are a little bit on the thin and short side for me, uh, to be honest. The large is absolutely perfect. Wonderfully balanced pen here in hand, as you can see, lays perfectly in my hand, perfect size. The pen can be posted. It does also post fairly deep onto the, onto the barrel and posted as well as unposted makes for a super, super balanced pen, a massively comfortable writing instrument in hand. This is really a stellar pen. The perfect couldn't, the, the balance couldn't be more perfect. The weight distribution is exactly here at the crook of your hand. Really wonderful, as said, capped as well as uncapped. A fabulous writing instrument. We then have, of course, the spectacular Sailor 21 Carat Gold Nib, the only company that I am aware of that nowadays may, does make 21 Carat Gold Nibs. The beautiful, it's a number six size nib, beautiful Sailor scroll work on here. It says 1911 for the founding year of Sailor, the anchor, the Sailor logo, 21 Carat Gold, 875 for the gold content, some scroll work around here as set does say sailor on here very very beautiful nib look at that let's just appreciate that for a second sailor pelican and platinum are may my personal favorite nib designs out there hm here on the side for hard medium and the feet down there we unscrew the pen the section we do have a small rubber o-ring here which makes sure that the barrel sits nice and tightly on the section metal threads here and as said the proprietary sailor converter right here and then i have it filled with a kyoto tag ink and i do think this is the what is it called the yeah the sherry blossom of keek i think is the name of that ink right here um, yeah, before we dive into the writing sample, let's do size comparisons first to the Sailor Pro Gear. This is not the slim, this is as set the standard. And what you do see here, of course, is that those two pens are exactly the same pen, so to speak, just that the Pro Gear is capped off. So the Pro Gear is shorter by the, uh, by the proportion of those tips let me call them tips here um uncapped 
same thing. The pro gear is only shorter by that little end thingy here, which of course makes the pen a little bit better for having having or carrying it in a shirt pocket. Fun fact, um, or regular fact first, the 1911 does come with a full rhodium plated gold nib, whereas the pro gear does come with that bicolor nib. And now, fun fact, because some people do ask that you can, and I show you that right here, just switch out the sections if you would like to do that. So if you have a 1911 large and a pro gear, you can just do something like that. So the sections, it's, I mean, the pens are exactly the same size. It's like, ah, come on, it's the same pens, right? Now, um, I've just switched those around, right? Just for you to see in case you have a 1911 large and you have a pro gear and you, you know, I don't know, have two different nib sizes as I do here. My pro gear does have a fine nib on that by chance also came from La Couronne, La Couronne du Comte and the 1911 large here does have a medium nib on in case you want to switch those nibs around or something like that. You can do that as I have just shown you. Yes, I was putting the right medium nib back on. So, and then my next size comparison, of course, a size comparison to my standard size reference pen, which is a Lamy Safari. And I think it is safe to say that those pens capped are approximately the same in length and uncapped. The 1911 large is just a wee bit shorter. Let me post the 1911 large. That's what the picture looks like, like this. And if I also do post the Lamy Safari. That's the picture that we do get. Writing sample towards the end of the review. I leave the pen posted. There's nothing much that I can say about Sailor Nibs apart from that these are spectacular writers. Nib has dried up a little bit in the course of the review. That of course normally doesn't happen, but the nib has been uncapped for quite a while right now. And we're going here with the Sailor 1911 large with a medium nib. And of course this is a Japanese medium nib. Japanese medium nibs or Japanese nibs do run on the finer side of things. So that medium will basically write like a Western fine. Um, this here, for example, is a Lamy Safari with a, with a fine nib. Oh, sorry. Lamy Safari. Horrible handwriting, of course, as always here on camera, but for the purpose of the review, you do see that even the Lamy fine, you can't see it, yeah, you see it, it's inked with black, so it has some black ink in here. I think you saw the F for fine, or you do believe me that it's a fine nib. So you do see that that Sailor medium is even finer than a Lamy fine nib. Sailor does of course have uh, this, you can hear that probably even, This very beautiful, fantastic, pencilish-like uh, feedback that those sailor nibs do have that feels really fantastic when writing. Uh, the nib is on the wetter side of things. That Kyoto tag ink is not exactly the wettest of inks. It's actually a pretty dry ink, but that sailor nib is definitely on the wetter side of things. As said, Sailor nibs, you can't go wrong with that. The pen costs 300 euro about. It is worth every single penny for me. Fabulous build quality. I personally find that the Sailor pens do have a lot better build quality than platinum pens. Sorry, platinum pen fans out there. I do appreciate the 3776 a lot. It's a fantastic pen, no doubt about that. But I personally find the build quality of the Sailors a little bit better. And I honestly also do find the build quality of Sailors a little better than the build quality of Pilot pens. So as said, that pen is worth 
every penny of those 300 euro that it costs around about and the nib is just fantastic. Sailor does make some of the best nibs out there and this is just a spectacularly beautiful rider. I hope that review was useful to you. I thank again La Couronne du Comte for sending me that pen for review and I'll see you guys at the next review. Bye bye.